Here at the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust, we're really good at talking about Shakespeare's life, his times and his legacy. But what's even more interesting than what we know about Shakespeare is how we know it. The Trust houses many important letters and legal documents relating to William Shakespeare that help us to paint a picture of his life. Our job at the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust is to take care of those precious documents, amongst other things, and to learn as much as we can from them so that we can continue to share these treasures with the public. So one of the most significant archive collections we look after are known as the Shakespeare documents. We're very fortunate to look after 31 of about 103 of these documents that survive, and these are handwritten documents from Shakespeare's own lifetime that mention him directly by name, and these are the direct archival evidence for Shakespeare's lifetime. This is the parish register from the mid-1500s. In the year 1564, we can see that under baptisms, we have an entry on April 26th. The Latin entry reads, Gulliamus, Phileus, Johannes, Shakespeare. This means William, son of John Shakespeare. Logic dictates baptism occurred two to three days after birth, owing to the high infant mortality rate. So historians settled on April 23rd. Not only is this the date on which he died, it also coincides with St George's Day, the patron saint of England. The archives help us to make deductions about the life of young William Shakespeare and what it would have been like for him growing up in this small market town. We can, for instance, make assumptions about William based on the activities of his father, John Shakespeare. Evidence tells us that John Shakespeare had many careers, including holding civic positions such as Alderman, Ale Taster and, for a time, High Bailiff of Stratford-upon-Avon. Records identify John as a glove maker, which would have been a respectable trade. John Shakespeare was an enterprising man and sold his leather goods from the workshop window that faces Henley Street. The house was then a family home and a business in one. In 1568, John was appointed High Bailiff, which means that he presided over important council meetings and acted as Justice of the Peace. As High Bailiff of Stratford, John also would have had the honour of wielding the town mace, which is cared for in our collection. Although John held respectable positions in town, he was prosecuted for illegal purchase and hoarding of wool and was often in trouble for loaning money and charging interest. By the 1570s, John found himself in significant debt and never fully recovered his social standing. We know that he retired from public office and that it was William who eventually would go on to restore the family's fortunes. Fast forward to 1616 and then we find the very last entry that relates to Shakespeare and that's his burial record. And by this time we can sort of tell that he's moved on in the world because he's identified as William Shakespeare Gent, which means he's not having to work for his money, he's made it, he's doing very well for himself. So alongside the original documents that we look after, we're, we also look after three copies of perhaps the most famous uh, item that relates to, to William Shakespeare, and that's the first folio. The folio, now known as the first folio because it was the first edition of Shakespeare's folio, is considered to be one of the most valuable books in the English language. This folio is a large bound copy of 36 of Shakespeare's plays. Without the first folio, we'd be missing quite a few of Shakespeare's plays. Normally, books of this size were reserved for religious and philosophical writings, and plays were actually published in a much smaller and cheaper format. So to have a book of this format tells us a lot about how valued Shakespeare actually was as a playwright and as a great literary figure.